Hello, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to week three of our Pilates class. I'm just going to wait a moment here because I can see a couple more people trickling in. Okay, hello everybody. Thanks for joining us. Today is week three of our Pilates class. And I think we have a couple of new people joining today. So if this is your first time doing our class in the series or uh, Pilates uh, in general, welcome. And um, I hope you'll enjoy this class. So our class is going to be based on um, a seated position first, and then we're gonna move into a lying position. Um, I've got a platform set up behind me. So um, hopefully at home, you've got a couch that you can sit on and then lie on or a bed of some sort. Um, you do not need to be lying down onto the floor or sitting on the floor. Um, but of course, if you prefer the floor, you are welcome to. Um, but this class was designed so that you can do it on a couch if you like. Um, and of course, you're welcome to have pillows around you. I've just got a small pillow today, um, mostly for my head, but you're welcome to get more pillows or bigger pillows if you find that it's a little more comfortable for you to lie down with more pillows under your head and shoulders. And um, so just like always, today's class is recorded. So that means it will be uploaded onto our YouTube channel and um, hopefully within the next week or so. So if you um, did want to review any of the class content, you are welcome to do so when this class is finished. And um, I believe the uh, class from last week should already be on the YouTube channel if you wanted to have a look. Okay, well, without further ado, let's get started. Hopefully you can see me and hear me okay. Um, so if you do have any questions in the class, you are welcome to type in the chat box. Um, or equally, there is a raise hand function, which should be just at the very bottom of your screen. Um, if you do click raise hand, I will have to manually come forward and um, uh, unmute you so that way you can ask your question um, through voice rather than typing if you prefer. Um, but uh, because I will be moving with you, I might not see the raise hand come up or the comments come up until the very end. Um, but at the end of the class, I will come forward and uh, read any questions you may have. Okay, should we get started? Okay, let me move back. So we're going to start in a seated position as always. And I want you to just move forward in your seat. So I don't want you to be all the way back here where your feet are kind of um, against the couch or, or um, the bed. Oops, let me just move this back a tiny bit. There we go. I want you to sit forward enough that you don't feel like you're gonna be leaning back or slouching off to one side. So we wanna be nice and tall over our sit bones. And all we're gonna start with today is we're just gonna place our hands onto the bed or the couch um, that you're sitting on, your feet flat onto the floor. And we're just gonna start with some grounding breaths. So you're welcome to close your eyes if you like. We're gonna take inhale through the nose. And out through the mouth. Try to relax the shoulders as much as you can. And again, in through the nose. And out through the mouth. And we're going to continue this breathing just in your own time. And with each exhale, I want you to feel your feet grounded further into the earth. All 10 toes pressing down into the earth. And maybe give them a little wiggle. Give your toes a little wiggle as they're doing this so you can really feel that you're connected to all of your toes. 
And then with the exhale, you press them firmly down into the ground. Almost as if you're growing roots deep down into the earth. And then we're going to draw our attention towards our hands, to our palms and our fingers, resting on this couch or the bed. And same as before, we're going to wiggle those fingers just to really feel where they are in space. And then with each exhale, you're going to press them down into the bed ever so slightly more. Feeling the connection of your palm down into the surface, growing roots deep down into the bed. And with the next exhale, you're going to open your eyes. And we're going to start with some Pilates marching, lifting the heel on one side and then the other, almost like you're pedaling your feet. You're alternating this Pilates march position, one heel up and then the other heel goes up, still sitting up nice and tall, feeling your feet and your hands grounded into the earth. Tall spine, crown of the head reaching for the ceiling. And as we're doing this pedaling movement, we're going to let the arms drop down. Let them hang. Feel the weight of your arms with gravity here. And when you're ready, we're going to add in the opposite arm to the leg. That's up. So opposite arm to the heel. Let's lift it off into this Pilates seated march position. And as we're doing this marching position, I want you to really pay attention to your posture. Hopefully your shoulders are not up by your ears. We want to have a nice long neck, opposite arm to the leg that's pedaling. Try not to flare the ribs, melt the ribs back into your spinal column. Tall posture through the spine, almost as if you are balancing a big jug of water on the top of the head. Nicely done. Adding in the breath. Nice and tall. We're going to keep this pedaling movement going on in our legs. We're going to drop the arms down. And we're going to bring the arms up to first position. And then to second position. Arching over into our modified mermaid. Back up to second position. Modified mermaid, back up to second position and drop the arms, repeat. We go first, second, shoulders away from the ears, stretch, second, stretch, second, and arms come down to repeat. Second, open the chest, stretch. Second, stretch. Second, and arms come down, rest the feet. We're gonna bring the arms up, 
open the out into a wide V, squeeze the shoulders back, and then bring the arms forward and down again. This is our chest stretch. Float the arms, open to a wide V, squeezing the shoulder blades back behind you, and down. Try not to flare the ribs as you stretch those arms back. Open, squeeze the shoulder blades, bring the arms in and down. One more, float the arms up, open, squeeze the shoulder blades, bring them in and lower back down. Going into our dumb waiter, open and close. Shoulders away from the ears, open and close, sitting up nice and tall, palms facing the, the ceiling, crown of the head, reaching up, imagine that jug of water, you're balancing. Just the shoulders and arms moving. And now we're gonna take it one step further into our Creole Petra, and then pull the elbows in with the palms up to return. And again, open, Palms down, reach, palms up, and close. Keep going, open, and reach, pull in, and close. Open, and reach, shoulders away from the ears, and in. On the next one, as we reach, lengthen one leg and bring it in and close. Same to the other side. Brush the leg off the floor, in and close, sitting tall. Open, reach, pull in and close again. Open, reach, pull in and close. Last four, sitting tall over the sit bones, in and close. Last three, open, reach, pull in and close. Last two, open and reach, pull in and close. Last one, open and reach, pull in and close. Stack the arms. And from here, we're going to imagine our forearms and our shoulders. This shape that we've got here, this rectangle is going to maintain the same shape at all times. We're gonna breathe in to prepare. Breathe out to twist the entire unit here over to the corner. Breathe in to hold. And breathe out to return to the middle. Again, inhale to prepare. Exhale to twist. Inhale to hold. Exhale to return. And again, inhale to prepare. Exhale to twist. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Inhale to hold. Exhale to return. One more. Inhale to prepare. Exhale to twist, inhale to hold, exhale to return. Dropping the arms down. And we're now going to place one hand onto the bed and we're gonna slide ourselves down into a lying position. So take some time here to get yourself into a lying position. You are welcome to put some pillows behind your head if you find that it's a little bit easier to have a supported neck in this position. When you're lying down, I'm going to get you to bend both of your knees such that both feet are flat onto the bed and your legs are together. Then we're going to open the toes out to the side and open the heels. So now your legs should be parallel. We're going to start by reviewing our five Pilates rest position, starting with the little diamond that we're making in our hand, like we did last time. So the thumbs come together and the fingers come together. 
The thumb side of the diamond is going to stick right into your belly button and the rest of the hand is going to rest down onto your pelvis. So if I turn from the side, that's what it looks like. The thumb goes into the belly button, the rest of the hand comes down. So now you've got a diamond shape. I want you to imagine that you've got a marble in the middle of this diamond and you're going to use your pelvis movement to roll that marble to the top of the diamond and then roll it to the bottom of the diamond. Again, to the top of the diamond, to the bottom of the diamond. Top of the diamond and the bottom of the diamond. And then with every passing rock motion here, you're going to make this rocking smaller and smaller and smaller until you're halfway between going as far as you can one way and halfway between going as far as you can the other way to find your neutral pelvis for you today. When you've got that, you're gonna hold that position and we're going to move on to the second item of our five Pilates rest position. We're going to imagine we're sitting on a block of ice and it's very cold and we're pulling up through our pelvic floor. Then with this position, we're going to melt our ribs down into the bed Try not to let the ribs flare, melt the ribs down into the bed as we maintain our neutral pelvis and also our pelvic floor and basin. You're going to press your shoulder blades down into the bed and slide them slightly towards your heels. And then we're going to think about long back of the neck, almost as if we're holding a little peach underneath our chin. And these five items, your neutral pelvis, your pelvic floor, your ribs melted down into the bed, shoulder blades pressing down and sliding towards your heels and long back of the neck with a peak under your chin, make up our five Pilates rest position. Inhale to repair. Exhale to float one leg up to a tabletop position. Inhale to prepare again. To deepen the contraction in your abdominals. Exhale to float your second leg up to tabletop without the back arching off the bed. And then we're going to bring one leg down and the second leg down again. Other side, inhale to prepare. Exhale to float one leg up to tabletop. Inhale to deepen the contraction in our abdominals. Exhale to float the second leg up to tabletop. Inhale to hold, exhale to lower, let's sit. Same to the other side. As we're doing this movement here, I want you to really focus on your five Pilates rest position. Check in with yourself. Is your back now lifting off the bed or are we still maintaining that neutral pelvis position? Are our ribs now flaring off the bed or are we still melting it down? Shoulders should be far away from the ears and they should be sliding down towards the feet still. Long back of the neck, little peach underneath the chin. And we're going to keep repeating this double tabletop position in your own time. Imagine I've got a big sheet covering over your legs. So if I can't see your legs moving, and I can only see your torso, it shouldn't look like you're moving at all. We should be nice and stable, nice and stationary. Long back of the neck. Ribs melted down into the bed. Nicely done. Now, you can either stay here with your double tabletop, or if you like to take it one step further, you are now welcome to stay in the double tabletop and reach one leg away on a diagonal, almost like it's pressing a button on the opposite wall. And then same to the other side. If this is too challenging for you and you feel like your back is now lifting off the bed, I want you to go back to just your double tabletop position. But if you feel like you're ready to have an added challenge, you are welcome to stay in the double tabletop and reach your leg away 
on a diagonal. Now, the lower down your diagonal is, the more challenging it is to stop your low back from lifting from doing this, lifting off the bed. So if that's too difficult, go up a little higher. So a little less steep with the legs will be a little bit easier to maintain your neutral pelvis and to keep your ribs melting down into the bed. Whereas the lower you go, the more difficult it is for you to maintain this position. So you can play around with the position, really engaging of the abdominal muscles, ribs melted down into the bed, long back of the neck, little peach under the chin, shoulder blades melted down into the bed and towards our feet. Pulling up through the pelvic floor still. Last 10, wherever you are. Don't forget to breathe. Keep your trunk nice and stable. Long back of the neck, little peach under the chin. And when you're finished, you're just going to hug those knees into your chest for a moment and just roll side to side slightly just to give yourself a little bit of a breather. And then when you're ready, you're gonna bring those legs back into our beginning position. So both knees bent, feet flat on the bed, legs together. From here, you're gonna open up your toes and open up your heels such that your legs are now parallel. We're gonna go into our abdo prep here. So you'll probably remember our abdo prep. We are going to think about a buckle going from the bottom of our, of our ribs towards the top of the same hip. So imagine like a seatbelt buckle and it's coming together. So you're thinking about buckling your ribs into the hip bones here. So you're thinking about ribs pulling down towards the hip. As you, if, if we lift our shoulders off the bed and float the arms up, reaching towards the heel. As you're doing those movements, I want you to imagine a little peach under your chin is still there. So you're still holding on to that. We're not going to be lifting our neck and craning them in this way. We're going to think about pulling the head back, holding that little peach underneath our chin into our abdo prep here. If you like to add in the breath, you can join me here with inhale to prepare. Exhale to float up. Inhale to hold. Exhale to release. If the breathing portion is a little bit too challenging, if there's too much to think about, then ignore the breath and just continue on with this movement. If your neck is starting to hurt, you're welcome to put your hands behind your head just to support your neck a little more. But I don't want to see anyone do this, pulling up with their elbows. You're thinking about the buckle from your ribs down to the hips. Now, you can either stay here, either with your arms floating or behind the neck. Or if you'd like an added challenge, you're welcome to join me here into our single tabletop. And as we're lifting the leg up to tabletop, the opposite knee, the stationary knee, should not be moving. So as I'm lifting up and thinking about this stationary knee as if I'm balancing a glass of water on top and it's not going to fall down or move anywhere. And you also wanna think about having a spirit level sitting on top of your pelvis and you want the little bubble to stay in the middle at all times. So we don't wanna be twisting side to side as we're doing this movement. And of course, you're welcome to place your hands behind your neck or sorry, behind your head. If you find that's a little helpful for you to be a little more supported. Remember you're thinking about that little peach underneath your chin so we're not crunching through the neck as we do this movement. Let's go for six more wherever you are.
then when you're done, you can relax those arms, relax your torso for a second, shake the head no from side to side just to release any tension you may have built up. From here, we're going to move on into our shoulder bridge. So with our shoulder bridge, just like last week, we're going to think about our spine as being very flexible. And we're going to start peeling each vertebrae, starting from the tailbone off the bed, one at a time. So imagine your spine like a string of pearls that you're lifting up from the sand, one pearl at a time, lift off the sand. Same thing with your vertebrae. And then when we lower down, we're lowering down one vertebrae at a time, all the way until our tailbone is placed back down. So think about your spine like a string of pearls and each pearl is lifting off the bed one at a time. And then you're placing each pearl down one at a time. I'm just moving my arm out of the way so you can see me, but at home, I want you to have both arms down beside you, but I'm just lifting my arm so you can see what's going on. But at home, your arms should be flat down, okay? Feel free to do this as slow as you like. And you'll notice that when I get to the top of my bridge, my body is in one straight line, one plank position. I am not going uh, crunching through my neck. Can you see that? Here, I'm crunching through my neck and lifting those ribs, whereas here, I'm in a good end position, okay? So you don't want to be going so far that we're now crunching through our back, crunching through our neck. You want it to be controlled, coming from your bottom muscles and the back of the thigh, one vertebrae at a time. Now, if this is a little too easy for you. You are welcome to lift both arms up into the air as you're doing this movement such that you don't have that extra balance from your arms here. You can keep the arms pointing at the ceiling if you like to make it slightly more challenging. Remember long back of the neck. One vertebrae at a time, pressing down and lifting up. Now, we did this arm lift position last week. If you think this is still a little too easy for you and you would like to try and add a challenge, when you get to the top of your bridge, I want you to lift one heel off the bed. I don't know if you saw that, one heel off the bed and then lower it back down to come back to your start position. And again, kill each vertebrae off the bed one at a time. And then at the top, the other leg is going to lift the heel. You see that? Lift the heel lift the heel like that and lower down. You only have to lift the heel once. I just did multiple times there in case you missed it. Reach the top, lift the heel and lower back down. Each vertebrae moving one at a time. And again, lift the heel, lower down. And again, Lift the heel, lower down. Keep those shoulders away from the ears as we're doing this. Imagine that spirit level sitting on the pelvis. You want that bubble to the middle so we don't shake or move like that. Let's do one more. And rest for a second. You can hug those knees into your chest if you like, or you can just lie there for a second and give your body a rest. We're going to now transition onto our side. So wherever you are, just take a moment and get yourself onto your side. And it doesn't really matter what side you face right now because we will do both sides, but you are welcome to grab a pillow and place it underneath your neck. Now, when we're in a sideline position, we want to bend both of our knees and stack our hips and stack our legs on top of each other. 
you want to make sure your feet are in line with your hips, in line with the shoulders, so that your feet are not too far forward and they're not too far back. You want them to be aligned so you can lift up your head to check. Your feet should be in line with the hip, in line with the shoulder. And the top arm is your balanced hand. And we're just going to place our fingers down. So we're not grabbing on. We're just placing the fingers down, shoulders away from the ears. We're going to start with our clams level two. So just like last time, you're going to pull that top hip down towards the feet such that there's a little gap underneath your spine. And then think about those headlights at the very front of your hips. They're pointing sideways right now, but we want to turn them so they point slightly down to the floor, but still maintaining that gap underneath your trunk if you pull that top hip down. From here, ribs melted back into our spinal column, so we're not flaring them out, but we're melting them back into our spinal column. Shoulders away from the ears, long back of the neck, little peach underneath the chin still. From here, you're going to lift your feet off the bed, maintaining that gap under your spine and the headlights pointing slightly down. And we're going to open that top knee without the headlights pointing at the ceiling. You want to keep the headlights pointing slightly down towards the floor. Maintain that gap underneath your spine, shoulders away from the ears, ribs melted back into your spinal column. I know lots to think about here. Little light touch with your fingertips, not gripping on for dear life. You'll probably notice with this type of clams that we're doing, where we're keeping that gap under our spine, and the headlights pointing slightly down to the floor, you're not going to be able to open very wide. And that's absolutely fine because if we're opening too wide, we're going to end up turning ourselves back and the headlights will now point at the ceiling. So check in with yourself. Make sure you still got that little gap underneath your spine because you're pulling the top hip down to the feet. Headlights pointing slightly down at the floor. Nicely done. Last 10. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One, and drop the feet, relax for a second. You can shake out the top hip, rub it out, and just relax for a moment. We're now going to practice our side kick exercise. So same start position as before. We're gonna think about the top hip pulling down, down towards the feet, such that you got a little gap under your spine. This time your headlights are gonna stay pointing sideways, pointing at the wall in front, fingertips down, ribs melted back into the spinal column, shoulders away from the ears, long back of the neck with that little peach under the chin. You're going to float the top leg up like so, almost like you've got a little table in between your legs, a little glass tabletop, and you're floating and, and, and resting that top leg there such that our shin is parallel to the floor, so our knee is not lower, our foot is not lower, but both the knee and the foot are at equal um, distance from the floor. And then lower back down for a second. Try that again. Maintain that gap underneath your spine and lower. And lower. Two more here. One more. This time, we're going to straighten the leg. Knee pointing forward. You're still thinking about that, that hip moving down to the feet so that you have the little gap under your spine. And this time, we're going to slide the entire leg forward, almost like, almost like you've got a glass table underneath your leg. And you're sliding that leg forward with a pointed toe. And then you're sliding it back with a flexed foot. So it's almost like you're, you're, you're dusting 
the glass table. So last time we did it with a bent knee, we're dusting the glass table with our leg. We're doing the same thing, except this time, we're dusting the glass table with our entire leg. And you're trying not to let the leg drop at any point. So we don't want the leg to drop, don't want the leg to drop. We want to maintain that gap, that distance, that distance between our thighs should be the same at all times. So maintaining that gap under your spine. If you can't go very far, that's okay. You can just do a little bit. Or if this is too tough, go back to what we were doing last week with a bent knee. Sliding of the glass table with the bent knee is fine as well, as long as our shin is parallel to the floor. So our knee is not lower, our foot is not lower. We want the entire shin to be parallel to the floor. So you can either stay here with the bent knee or you are welcome to try with the straight leg. Remember, light fingertips for balance. Keep that gap underneath the spine, head life still pointing in front of you. Shoulders away from the ears, ribs melted back. Long back of the neck, little peach underneath the chin. Keep that gap under the spine if you can. If you need a break, you're welcome to drop the leg, rub it out, and then get right back into it if you can. Or equally, if you want to try a few with the straight leg and then go back to a few with the bent knee, that's okay as well. Whatever works for you today. The most important thing is we're maintaining our posture or our technique here. So I'd rather you not do the straight leg if we're starting to drop down or losing that gap or gripping on for dear life. I'd rather you go back to the bent knee. So we want good technique as we're doing this. Sliding, imagine you're dusting a glass table with that leg. Let's do four more wherever you are. Try not to let the leg shake either as you're moving. Especially when you're going forward, don't let the leg fall down and don't, don't let the leg shake. I know, easier said than done. When you've done your four, you can have a rest, rub out your hip for a second, give yourself a bit of a break. Then we're going to move those arms in front of us such that our palms are together and you're just gonna relax the legs for a second. So they're bent. And you're thinking about the hips being stacked and the knees being stacked. You're going to keep them that way. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do some arm circles, shoulders away from the ears. We're going to circle the arm back and let our gaze follow the arm and return to the start position. As we're doing the circle, I want you to make sure your legs stay stacked where they are. I don't want them to fall off. I don't want the top leg to now fall back. I want you to keep the leg where it is as you circle. Now, of course, I'm very close to my wall because of the size of my room. So my arm is bent as I'm going around the back. But ideally, I want you to keep the arm circle straight. I want you to keep the elbow straight as you circle around. So it's a bit of a twist here because you're letting your eyes follow the movement without the top hip sliding off. Let's do one more. And then we'll rest for a second and take a moment to roll onto your other side. For me, I'm going to sit up and come up and over to the other side because I want to keep facing you. But at home, you are welcome to roll onto the other side if you've got the space. Same thing on this side. We're going to start with the knees together and legs bent. You are going to line up your posture such that your feet are in line with the hip, in line with the shoulder, top hand resting down. From here, you're going to imagine 
that top pit, whoops, I'm just gonna move my pillow because I'm not sure whether you can hear me since my microphone is attached to my uh, headphones here. Okay, hopefully you don't hear uh, the pillow moving. Okay, so from here, whoops, we are going to make sure our feet are lined up with our hip, lined up with our shoulder. Then from here, we're going to take the top hip and pull it down, down to our feet such that we create a little gap underneath the spine. Now we're thinking about those headlights and they're pointing directly in front of us right now. We're going to point them slightly down to the floor, maintaining that gap underneath the spine. Ribs melted back into our spinal column, shoulders away from the ears, back of the neck nice and long, little peak under the chin. We're going to float the feet off the bed into our clams level two, opening the leg and lowering it down. The entire time we're doing our clams here, you want to make sure you still got that gap underneath your spine and the headlights are pointing slightly down at the floor. Fingertips nice and light, no gripping. Shoulders away from the ears, long back of the neck. So if I covered up your legs again, with a big blanket, it shouldn't look like you're moving at all from the hips up. You might notice one side feels easier or harder than the other, and that's okay. Even if the movement is smaller, absolutely fine. Maintain that technique. Keep that gap under the spine. Keep the headlights pointing slightly down at the floor. Keep the ribs melted back into the spinal column. Keep the shoulders away from the ears and long back of the neck. Try not to hold your breath. Make sure you're breathing here. And so that. Going for another 10 in your own time. Keep that gap under your spine. Headlights pointing slightly down towards the floor. Ribs melted back. Neck nice and long. Light fingers. Breathing. And whenever you've done your 10, you're gonna lower down and rub out the hip and rest for a second. And then we're going to move on to our next exercise. So just like before, we're thinking about pulling that top hip down towards the feet such that you create a little gap under the spine. But our headlights this time are gonna remain pointing in front of us, ribs melted back into the spinal column light fingertips, shoulders away from the ears, long back of the neck, the little peach under the chin. We're going to float the top leg up such that your shin is parallel to the floor, so your knee is not lower, your foot is not lower, and then we bring the whole leg down. Same thing again. Float the leg up and lower down. Make sure the gap under your spine is still there. Headlights pointing forward and down. And when you're ready to take it another step further, you can either keep your knee bent and think about dusting that glass table with the knee bent, or if you like the added challenge, you can keep the legs straight, point the toes as you come forward, flex the foot as you go back. Now remember, we're not twisting back like that. We wanna keep the headlights pointing forward and keep that gap underneath our spine. Everything should be nice and still. Shoulders away from the ears. Long back of the neck, little peach under the chin. Think about the entire leg being parallel to the floor. The gap between your thighs stays the same, so your leg doesn't drop off when you go back, and it doesn't drop off when you come forward. You want to maintain that gap at all times. Nicely done. Shoulders away from the ears. 
If this is too difficult, remember, you don't need to make the movement very big. By all means, you can make it much smaller. But if you're barely moving at all with the legs straight, I'd rather you go back to the bent knee version as long as our knee's not coming down or our foot's not coming down. We want the leg to be the same distance at all times. So the shin is what we're looking for. So don't let the leg drop when you come back. Keep that shin up parallel to the floor. So it's up to you if you want to do the bent version or the straight version. But the whole purpose of this is we're trying not to shake as we come forward. And as we come back, you want to be nice and stationary. Think about that gap underneath your spine. Remember, you can also strain the leg. Keep the ribs melted back into the, into the spinal column. Try not to let the ribs flare. Let's do four more wherever you are in your own time. Breathing. And then you can relax and rub out the hip when you are done. Bring the arms in front. We're thinking about stacking the hips, stacking the knee. And we're going to do an arm circle, opening the arm into a giant circle. So just like before, I'm a little close to my wall. But hopefully at home, you'll be able to straighten your arm as you circle around. Now, as we're doing this, we don't want our top hip to be rolling back. We want to keep it stacked. So we're really twisting. We're twisting from the upper body. Keep the ribs melted in. Try not to let that top leg fall off the, the uh, bottom leg here. Keep the leg stacked as we circle around. One more. And then relax. And then when you're ready, take your time. We're going to move ourselves back up to sitting. Take your time here. Don't want anyone to get up too fast because you might feel a little dizzy. Take your time to adjust yourself into a seated position again. We're trying not to move too far back in our seat. We want to be perched such that we can sit right over our sit bones and be nice and tall. From here, we're going to go back into our mermaid stretch. Our hands are going to be flat on the bed. Sit up tall, crown of the head, reaching for the skillet. We're going to scoop up and over. Shoulders away from the ears, both sit bones pressing down into the bed and come back up, same to the other side, up and over. Both sit bones pressing down into the bed or the couch, shoulders away from the ears. One more each side, scoop up and over. One more here, scooping up and over. And coming back to the middle. Sitting tall, stacking one arm on top of the other into our spine stretch. We're going to twist our upper body around, leading with the breastbone. Then from here, we're going to open our arms into the Y. We squeeze the shoulder blade back into our chest stretch. And coming back to stack position and to the middle. Same to the other side, sitting tall. Twisting on the spot, leading with the breastbone. Open the arms, squeezing the shoulder blades back. And return. One more each side. Feet flat onto the floor. You're like a corkscrew, twisting on the, on the spot. We're not twisting away, but we're keeping our spine stacked on top of our sit bones. Squeeze the shoulder blades back. And back into the middle. We're going to drop the arms. We're going to do a big breath in as we scoop the arms. 
And breathe out. And again, breath in. And breath out. One more breath in. And breath out. And you are done. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for Pilates week three. Next week is going to be our final session of the series. I hope you enjoyed the class and it gave you a little bit of grounding this morning. So just like before, the class is recorded and it will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, hopefully within the next week or so. If you would like to practice any of the exercises we did today, you are welcome to check out the YouTube channel and have a look at the recording from our previous weeks, or you can wait a week for today's recording as well. And then I will see you next week if there are no questions. You're welcome to type in the chat box if you've got any questions, or if not, I'm just going to type our email in the chat box here. So info at parkingsin.bc.ca in case you think of any questions later on and um, you want to email us to ask. Great. Thank you, everybody. I will see you next week. Happy Thursday. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Bye for now. See you later.